Welcome to Pre-Math. In this video tutorial, we are going to solve this given special kind of radical equation that involves not only this square root but also a cube root as you can see over here. And at the end, we are going to check our answer as well. So let's go ahead and get started with the solution and here's the very first thing we are going to do. Let me just move this square root on the right hand side. So this could be written as the cube root of x plus 3 equals to the square root of x minus 1. And here's our much nicer looking equation and now we are going to convert this radical form into exponential form. So this left hand side radical cube root could be written as x plus 3 power 1 third, isn't it? And equal to this square root of x minus 1 could be written as x minus 1 power 1 over 2. And here's the rule that we applied over here. If we have this radical of x with the index n, so this could be written as x power 1 over n. Once again, n is our index. And here's our next step. Let's focus on these number 3 and 2 over here. And we know that the least common denominator, or sometimes we call it least common multiple, of these two numbers is going to be 6. So let's go ahead and take power 6 on both sides. I'm going to take power 6 over here on the left hand side and power 6 on the right hand side as well. And now let's go ahead and take care of these two exponents. We are going to multiply them out by using this power rule. So the left hand side is going to become x plus 3 power 1 third times 6 is this become 2 equal to x minus 1 power 3. Now let's go ahead and expand this left hand side binomial by using this a plus b square formula. So this could be written as x square plus 6x plus 9 equals to so now let's go ahead and uh, expand this right hand side by using this a minus b power 3 formula. This is going to give us x power 3 minus 3x square plus 3x and then minus 1. And now let's move all these terms on this uh, right hand side so we are going to get x power 3 minus 3x square plus 3x minus 1 and that is going to give us negative x square minus 6x and then minus 9 and let's set it equal to 0. Now let's go ahead and combine the like terms and simplify so we are going to get x power 3 minus 4x square minus 3x minus 10 equal to 0. And here we got this cubic equation and now we are going to solve this one. And let me go ahead and call this as our equation number 1. And one more thing over here. Let's focus on this uh, leading coefficient x power 3 so the leading coefficient is going to be by default 1. And now let me go ahead and call this leading coefficient, this first number as p. So in our case p is 1. And on this other end, on the right hand side, I'm going to call this negative 10 as a q. So therefore our possible divisors for 1 is going to be simply p equal to positive or negative 1. And for this possible divisors for negative 10 is going to be positive or negative 1, positive negative 2, positive negative 5, and positive or negative 10. 
So that's our ratio Q over P is going to be simply all these divisors of Q divided by the divisors of P. So that's our divisors turns out to be once we divide this whole thing by positive or negative one that is going to give us these possible divisors. Now let's go ahead and find the possible solution by just plugging in this positive one and negative one in this equation number one and see which one is going to give us zero. And here I picked x equal to one value and I plug it in in this equation one and it turns out to be negative 16 which is not equal to zero. So that means this is not a solution. Likewise, I picked x equal to negative one and plug it in in this equation again. And this gave us negative 12. Once again, this is not equal to zero. So this is not a solution as well. And likewise, I have tried x equal to positive 2 and negative 2 as well. In either case, we got uh, these numbers negative 24 is not equal to 0. So this is not a solution. And likewise, for x equal to negative 2, we got uh, this one. When we plug it in in this equation 1, we got negative 28, which is not equal to 0. So that means both of these are not solution as well. Now let's go ahead and pick uh, x equal to positive 5 first. And we plug it in in this equation 1. And we can see that we indeed get equal to 0. So that means yes we got a solution. So that means x equal to 5 is one of our solutions. Just keep in your mind. So thus x equal to 5 turns out to be one of our solution to this cubic equation. And we know that this equation number one has the highest degree is three cubic equation. So that means we are going to have at most three solutions. We figured out one of our solution, which is five. Let's go ahead and find the other two now. Here's our next step. Let's go ahead and uh, find the other two solutions. In order to find other two solutions, we have uh, two options. Either we can use a synthetic division are long division and we know that the synthetic division is going to be a lot more easier than the long division. And now let me show you how to use this synthetic division. First go ahead and write down these coefficients. Our coefficients are 1, negative 4, negative 3 and negative 10. I'm going to write them down over here. 1, negative 4, negative 3 and negative 10. And I am going to write down this x equal to 5 number outside right up here. Now let's perform the synthetic division now. Let's go ahead and move this 1 all the way over here. 1. Let's go ahead and multiply this one diagonally. 5 times 1 is 5. I'm going to write down over here, let's add these two numbers. Negative 4 plus 5 is going to give us 1. Let's go ahead and multiply 5 times 1 once again. Diagonally, 5 times 1 is 5. Negative 3 plus 5 is going to give us 2. Let's multiply 5 times 2. That is going to give us 10. Negative 10 and plus 10 is going to give us 0. This is our remainder turns out to be zero. And just keep in your mind, whenever we have a zero remainder, that means that x equal to five is indeed our solution. Now let's focus on these coefficients over here, the one that I circled them. And this is going to go for x square, this is going to go for x, and this is going to go for constant number. So therefore we got 1x square plus 1x and then plus 2 
and let it set it equal to zero and we have this quadratic equation and we are going to solve it by using a quadratic formula and here's our next step let's go ahead and now solve this quadratic equation by using a quadratic formula and here's our quadratic formula that we will be using now and now let's go ahead and fill in the blanks in this quadratic formula where our a value is 1 b is 1 as well and c is 2 so we're going to have x equal to minus b means that's going to become negative 1 plus minus this b square means 1 square minus 4 times 1 times c is 2 everything is divided by 2 times a is 1 and here in this next step i have just simplified these one out and i got in this radical sign 1 minus 8 and we finally got x equal to negative 1 plus or minus square root of negative 7 divided by 2 now let's focus on this part over here square root of negative 7 and here i have just wrote down negative 7 square root right up here which could be broken down to negative 1 times 7 or which could be written as square root of negative 1 times square root of 7 and always remember the square root of negative 1 is always equal to i where i is an imaginary number so our simplified answer turns out to be i times square root of 7 so i can write this one as x equal to negative 1 plus or minus i times square root of 7 divided by 2 so thus we have figured out our three solutions out of which this 1x equal to 5 is our one real solution and over here these two are our imaginary or sometimes we call it complex solutions and here's our final step let's check our this solution x equal to 5 and see whether it's going to work for us so let's go ahead and plug it in in this equation wherever we see x we are going to replace it by 5 and here i replace x by 5 as you can see over here now i can write this cube root of 5 plus 3 is 8 minus the square root of 5 minus 1 is 4 now the question mark is it equal to 0 now let's focus on this cube root of 8 i have just copied it down and i simplified it and it turns out to be equal to 2 so i can replace this one by 2 minus the square root of 4 is 2 as well and the question mark is it equal to zero we can see on the left hand side we got a zero and on the right hand side we got a zero as well and we can see that this is a true statement so thus x equal to 5 is our valid solution so thus our x equal to 5 is only one real solution thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more exciting videos bye